Um, so yes, we are looking at that passage, asking, seeking, knocking from Matthew chapter 7, and how God desires to give us good things. We're going to talk about what asking, seeking, and knocking actually mean. Asking our are we bugging God when we do that? How do we cope when we're not, or when we feel like we're not asking for something unreasonable, yet we're not receiving it? And asking why? God wants me to have good gifts. Do I feel like all the doors are closed? So when we look at the passage in the verse, ask and seek and knock, ask will be given to you, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be opened to you in Matthew chapter When we look at that verse by itself, it kind of sounds like I ask for whatever I want and I get whatever I want, right? If only it worked that way. If it did, I would have a million dollars in my bank account and a trampoline in my backyard, okay? <laughs> but alas, we don't receive everything that we want and everything that we pray for. He's not a vending machine God. He's not a God that when we ask for something, he just gives us what we want. We don't put in our th prayer, punch in the number, and bam, out comes whatever we want. Because what it's talking about here is being persistent in prayer asking, seeking, and knocking. Romans 12, 12 sums up a lot of what we're talking about. It says, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be kind in prayer. So it's not pray at once and leave it done, but it's continuing to pray over and over and over, asking God for what we need. If we received whatever we wanted, would we desire relationship with God? Would we go to him continually? Would we lean on him? Would we rely on him if we simply got whatever we wanted as soon as we asked for it? If you haven't put it together, the answer to that would be no. <laughs> we were designed with relationship in mind. That's why God created us. God created us to be in relationship with him. And how would we receive everything if we wanted if two people were praying for and against the same thing? I want this, I don't want this, and they were praying against it. It wouldn't work out, right? So we can't receive what we want logically because what if one person is praying for one thing and what if one person is praying against it? It can't work that way. I don't know if you're like me, and I'm not the kind of person who likes to ask more than once for something. Have you, those of you who are parents, you ask your kid for something and you say, and I'm not going to ask you again. <laughs> And sometimes I find myself going, having this attitude with God of like, I've asked for this. What I've asked for is not unreasonable here. So why aren't you doing it? There's a film about the creek and one of the characters in it, his name is David. And he says, I've asked you thrice. I've asked you thrice for a towel and I have not received it. And sometimes I feel like we can get with God. I received. But sometimes we're called to ask for things because over and over and over again for various reasons. We're going to talk about those a little bit later. But we, God did not simply give us, or God does not exist simply to give us what we want. If he did, the world would look a lot different. That high 2020, have you ever received or received something from God and you look back and you go, oh, that's why. That really wasn't a good thing for me. I understand why God told me no in that. So when we ask for God for things, are we bugging him when we ask over and over and over and over again? The short answer to that is no. Why would he call us to be constant in prayer, call us to be persistent, tell us to ask and seek and knock if he was going to get annoyed by it? Because he could have just said, ask and it'll be open for you. He could have just said, seek and it'll be open for you. Or he could have said, knock and it'll be open for you. But he put all three of them together. And I think that's very intentional, asking, seeking, and knocking. I want to have the same persistence in prayer and asking and seeking and knocking as Lincoln Boven has to get out of bedtime. Okay, for those of you who know Lincoln, Lincoln is Rich and Pam's youngest son, he's three. Um, for those of you who are your first child dedication, he was a little acrobat. Lincoln hates bedtime, okay? And it's not uncommon for me to be on the phone with Pam after she puts her kids to bed, and Lincoln is up there screaming, let me out, let me out, let me out, 
for like an hour <laughs> after bedtime. He is so persistent, he has tried to kick the drywall next to his door to get himself out of his room. I want to be that persistent in my prayer life and asking God for things. Because I'm kind of one of those people who like ask God, and then I forget to like ask again. I want to have that level of persistence. Let me out, let me out, let me out. And he'll just scream and scream until he receives what he wants, but he doesn't. So, because his mom and dad, they know, they don't give him what he wants in that circumstance. What he wants is to get out of bed, but they don't give it to him because they know what's best for him. And what's best for him is sleep and to be left in his room. It's the same way. God knows what we need and what's beneficial for us. And he gives according to that. It may not look like we want it to, but it's what's beneficial for us. So how do we cope when we're not asking for anything unreasonable, yet we do not receive? Sometimes we have things in our life, like maybe you're healing over a person and you're like, Lord, how could I, in asking for this, possibly be asking for anything bad, so why is it not happening? Asking for healing over someone is a good thing. It's not bad to ask of that. So what, there are so many things that we do not see in why we're not getting what we're praying for. Like I said earlier, hindsight 2020, recognizing things that are not, what God sees is so much more than what we see. And there are lives where things don't work out the way that we want them to. Because God knows what's best. And I, I have had circumstances in my life where I've prayed for something, and God has said, Lord, I don't think that's a very good idea. And I've said, but I want it. Has anyone else ever prayed like that too? Yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. And yeah, like, do you understand that? I know what's best, and that's why I told you no. That's why this wasn't good for you. This is why I tried to lead you away from it, but you're like, but I want it, and you were In 1 Samuel chapter 8, the Israelites wanted a king. And telling the prophet Samuel, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king. So Samuel goes to God, says, God, this is what the Israelites are asking for. They're asking for a king. And he was like, mm, that's not a very good idea. But here's the deal. I'm going to give them a king, but you better go to them and you better warn them. If you get a king, these are all of the things that are going to be good. I do not recommend it. So he goes to the Israelites and he tells them, okay, a king, but you better be warned. If you are to receive a king, he will take your sons and he will make them go to war. He will take your best vineyards and your best land. He will make your daughters bakers and perfumers and all these things, and you are not going to like it. But the Israelites didn't care. They said, we want a king. So God gave them a king. So maybe you don't have it because you haven't actually prayed for it. Maybe you haven't asked enough times for it. Uh, in 1 Samuel, Hannah in the beginning of 1 Samuel, Hannah doesn't have any children, and she prays for a child, and she prays, and she prays, and she prays, and she goes to the temple, and she prays, and she prays, and she prays, and finally God hears her prayer and gives her a son, whom she then gives back to the Lord. But it took a lot of prayer for Hannah to get to that point. Or you have Peter in jail in Acts chapter 12, and the people were praying fervently until God and his timing caused the guards to fall into a trance and an angel to lead Peter out. They didn't pray one time, God help Peter get out of jail, and then went about their merry way. They stopped what they were doing and they prayed fervently until they received what they asked for and Peter got out of prison and went to the home of Mary, mother of John Mark. They continued to pray over and over and over again. It took all of their being. They stopped what they were doing. They put their lives on hold and they took it to prayer. And I think a lot of times we tend to, you know, I prayed before bed or I prayed in the morning and those are good things. We shouldn't stop doing them. But how often do we allow prayer and praying for the things that we're asking for to be a part of our daily life? I struggle with this tremendously. You're, maybe you're asking and you're not receiving because you're asking with the wrong motives. You're asking it, as James 4.3 says, you're asking um, because of your own selfish motives and your own selfish desires. 
and I struggle with this. I have things that I want, and it's like simply because I want them. Not because they're good for me, not because they're beneficial for me, but simply because I want them. And that's why the door isn't open. Maybe the door is not open because you're not knocking on the right door. So this door down the hall could be flung open waiting for you to walk through it, but you're too busy standing here banging on this door that's clearly not opening. And no matter how hard you try or how much you try to kick the drywall around the door, it's not opening because it's not the door that's supposed to open. You see, sometimes things, opportunities don't always look the way that we want them to, or we think life's supposed to go out this way and I'm supposed to walk through this door and then this door and this door and this door. And this is how it's supposed to go. I like to map things out in my brain. I like to think really far ahead. And it's really hard when I get roadblocked by a door that doesn't open. But are we so focused on one door that we're not looking down the hallway, allowing God to offer opportunities for other different open doors? Or are we too stuck in our own ways? In the meantime, or, and maybe the door is the right door, but it's not open because it's under construction. And God is working and moving behind the scenes and the doors in our lives that we don't see yet and we don't know. And so we have to sit and wait patiently. I love the Princess Diaries movies. And in the second one, Mia moves into the palace and she can't go into her suite for the first like week or so that she's there because it's still under construction. So instead of the queen letting her in early to see this under construction room, she waits and she has to stay somewhere else until the room is completely finished and ready to be open. And sometimes God does the same thing with us. He waits until the timing is perfect and the room is done and everything is in order so that when we wa- open that door opens and we walk through it, it's good. Because if things are under construction, they may not always go well. In the meantime, as we wait, we are to continue to pray fervently. Again, something I struggle fiercely with because I don't have to let, or I don't like to have to ask over and over and over again. But it's important to remember that God desires to give us good gifts. Like the passage said, if any of you ask for a, a piece of bread, would you give your child a rock? No, you wouldn't. You, a human being, know how to give good gifts. Maybe you've had a time where somebody has given you a gift that just hit it out of the park. It was so good. You're like, this is the gift I didn't even know I needed or this is exactly what I wanted. And it came from another human. It blew you out of the water. It was so good. So do you think if a human can give you something good, and humans know you, but God knows you better, that God doesn't know how to give us good things too. But it can be hard in the meantime to sit and to wait. And then there are times where it feels like, God, I thought you want to give me good things. But right now it doesn't feel like anything is good. Or we think that things that are not good things, that it's because God is out to get us. Or we feel like God is just handing out all of these good things to other people and he's just withholding them from us or from me. And I sometimes feel like this and struggle this too. But I assure you that God is not withholding good things at you because he's mad at you or he doesn't really love you or he's not really there for you. But sometimes it's because that room is under construction. But in the meantime, we have to wait And that's the hardest part. I hate waiting, especially when I don't necessarily know what's expected next. But in the meantime, we ask and we seek and we knock. Sometimes the things that we want are not good things. Like I talked earlier about Lincoln. Lincoln staying up late may seem like a good thing, but Lincoln being three doesn't know what's best for him. His parents do. God knows what's best for us. Even when we think we know what's best for us. While I'm sitting here, um, Christianity is one of the only religions where we're allowed to ask God why. We don't have to follow God blindly. We're allowed to ask questions. And so as we're in this period of sitting and waiting and asking and seeking and knocking, I'm reminded of the Psalms, Psalm 10 verse 1, asks, God, why are you so far away from me? Or 42.9 says, I will say to the God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? 
Why must I go about in sorrow because of the enemy's oppression? The psalmist here feels like they've been abandoned by God as they're sitting and seeking and waiting. But they're not because they're still going to God. He even says, God, my rock, why, are you, why have you forgotten me? He's still turning to God, but he feels like he's been left out. He feels so far away from God, but he's continuing to ask God, to seek God, to knock on that door until it is open for him, until he feels close to God again. You're not bugging God when you go to him in prayer over and over and over again about the same issue. You're not bugging God when you say, God, I don't understand what's going on. You're not bugging God when you're asking for things. Sometimes we feel like things are too frivolous to ask him. They're not too frivolous to ask him. He wants to hear all of our prayers, the good things, the hard things, all of them. He desires to hear from us because he designed us for relationship with him. So keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking with fervor, knowing that God desires to give each one of us good gifts and good things. They may not be the doors you want to open. They may not be the time in which you want them to open, but they're exactly the doors that we need because God desires to give us good things. And so as we sit and we wait, don't forget to give him glory. Would you pray with me? God, thank you that you desire to hear from us. Thank you that you desire to give us good gifts that every good and perfect thing comes from you, God. We praise you and we thank you for that. I pray that as we wait in the meantime, that we would ask and seek and knock, Lord, whatever that thing is, that we would just persevere in asking for it, Lord, until in your perfect timing, you show us, you either give us that or you show us what we need instead. Lord Jesus, we, um, we praise you in the meantime and we thank you for who you are and all that you've done for us. In your name I pray, amen.